podcast, and they uh, somehow want to credit me with uh, saying that that's how they got started because they want to eliminate all uh, plant material because plants hate us. And uh, I'm, a, mm. I'm a plant predator. I eat tons of plants. In fact, I eat mostly plants. And I, I select my plants carefully. So why not do a carnivore diet? What's, what's the downside? Well, I, I would agree with a lot of these carnivore diet enthusiasts like Paul Saladino or Sean Baker that one can get most of the nutrients, the minerals, the vitamins, et cetera, that they need from a properly comprised nose to tail carnivore diet, right? Everything from the liver to the kidney to the bone broth to the bone marrow to the testicles to the ground up bone. I mean, you, you, you can pull it off. Now, I think the issue is that you know, a lot of these these plant foods, they're painted by carnivore diet enthusiasts as so-called survival foods, right? Things that our ancestors would have only turned to if they didn't have access to the uh, to the more convenient and nutrient dense large animals that they could have hunted. But the the problem with that scenario is, yes, let's let's say that that maybe they're right and plants were at one time a survival food. Well, they've been woven into our culture and into our tradition and into our societal norms in such a way that they've become quite enjoyable parts of our cuisine. You know, when you show up to Thanksgiving dinner and, and you know, Aunt Judy brings her, you know, her wonderful, whatever, you know, goat cheese beet kale salad and, and somebody else shows up with a, with some, you know, special apple pie that they've made and, and you know, somebody else has got their you know, whatever their, their, their sprouts and their greens, or, you know, my dad always shows up with some kind of, you know, shoots or, or sprouts <laughs> or some, something that he's grown in his kitchen. You know, these, these are foods that we gather around and they become staples in traditions and in societies and, and completely ignoring the plant kingdom as a food source sucks a lot of the enjoyment out of the vast array of fascinating things that we can eat that grow on this planet. So part of it is just the pure, uh, the psychosocial component of just being able to, to eat a wide variety of foods that go beyond uh, meats. And the other thing th that I think is interesting, you know, for example, I was just reading a book, I'm, I'm setting up on the local uh, Spokane Indian tribe, right? And, and just because I want to know more about the the Native American culture and, and the type of folks who, who roamed these plains that I live on, you know, before I arrived here, before, you know, some of my ancestors arrived here. And when I'm reading the book, you know, they were down in the Spokane Falls collecting hundreds of pounds of salmon in baskets as these salmon would jump up through the falls. And literally, and I'm sure folks have heard this story, you know, the style of hunting, of, of driving the vast quantity of large animals off of cliffs, you know, on horses and then collecting the carcasses at the bottom because there were just so many bison and buffalo and deer and elk and moose. But the whole time that the men were out doing all of this, the women were were back uh, in in the in the villages and the cities, collecting underground roots and plants and berries and seeds and nuts, and it wasn't because they were starving, it was because they dressed up all these animal foods with all these other compounds that they used as medicine, that they used as digestifs, that they used as as flavor enhancers, and so I I even raise an eyebrow at this notion that that ancient man or woman would have just completely neglected plant matter even if animals were in, in vast and available quantity. I just, I don't see that 